When I travel with my kids, we always try and do one educational thing a day. It usually involves going to a museum. And museums are great. They're important. But they're also exhausting, right? Acting like you're interested in that crap. <laughs> There's so much pressure to be impressed in a museum. It's like, ooh, look at that, kids. Wow, that's a, well, that's a water fountain. What do we got over here? <laughs> And I've been to all types of museums. You know, I've been to children's museums, which are really just museums of diseases your kids can get from other people's kids. <laughs> it's like, why don't you go over there and see if we can get the chicken pox? <laughs> In Stockholm, I brought my kids to a ship museum, the Vasa Museum. It was a ship museum, but it only had one ship. So it felt more like a ship garage. <laughs> But that one ship, the Vasa ship, sunk on its maiden voyage in Stockholm's harbor in the 1700s, which is not good. But that's the largest attraction in Sweden. Most countries, their big attraction is a design marvel, like the Sydney Opera House or the Eiffel Tower. But Sweden was like, here's our boat that didn't float. <laughs> this is why we make furniture. <laughs> that ironically floats. Often the museums are art museums, and those are the most intimidating, right? Because in art museums, they tell us what is the good art. We have no say in the matter. Like, That's good art. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> they treat everyone like a child at an art museum. They're like, don't touch anything. Nobody touch anything. I wasn't gonna. <laughs> now I kind of want to. <laughs> Everyone's speaking in hushed tones. Be respectful. We're about to look at the work of a madman. <laughs> he painted this after he chopped off his own ear. Why are we whispering? Van Gogh's dead. Even if he was alive, he couldn't hear us. <laughs> Recently after a show, someone came up to me, they're like, you know, it's not pronounced Van Gogh, it's pronounced Billy Joel. <laughs> I find it hard to leave art museums, mainly because I can't find the exit. I create another room filled with paintings of ugly Dutch people. In the 1600s, they painted every ugly Dutch person. Hey, you're hard to look at. Can I do your portrait? Making that hay look good, aren't you? Fine art. I sometimes it's feel like it's wasted on me. You know, like the Mona Lisa, we've all seen the Mona Lisa. The most beautiful smile in the world. The most beautiful smile. I'm like, have you seen Halle Berry? <laughs> Heck, have you seen Chuck Berry? <laughs> I don't even know if Mona Lisa's smiling. To me, it looks like she's just came from the dentist. She's like, mm. <laughs> Nova Kane's wearing off. Our museums will occasionally ask if you'd like to become a member. Would you like to become a member? Uh, how, how often would I have to come here? <laughs> I, I think I can only pretend to be interested once. There's always people sketching in an art museum. I always point them out to security. I'm like, copying. <laughs> Got a forgery happening mid-forge. Those art museum security guards, you know, they're important. They're, some of that art is priceless. Some of it's on loan. You see that next to a painting, on loan from a rich person. <laughs> the poor people may look at my art. <laughs> Don't let them get their peasant fingers on it. <laughs> some of that art is priceless. Recently, a Da Vinci painting sold for $450 million. Like, what room do you put that in your house? I put that in the game room. <laughs> it was a Da Vinci painting, Salvatore de Mundo. It was a painting of Jesus, but it's not like Da Vinci even knew what Jesus looked like. He painted it 1,500 years after Jesus walked the earth. So he was just guessing. He's like, I don't know, he's got brown eyes probably? I don't know. <laughs> he probably just painted someone he knew. <laughs> you know, back in the day, they're like, people are like, what is that, your nephew Eddie? Like, no, that's Jesus. <laughs> the savior of the world. Uh, Eddie's wearing the same outfit as that. <laughs> that's a coincidence. 
My kids were with me. In Amsterdam, I brought my kids to the Anne Frank house. I told some friends that, and they're like, aren't your kids a little young for the Anne Frank house? And you know what I learned? They are. They're too young. <laughs> but I wanted to bring them. You know, it's an important place. I want them to learn. So I brought them. We were standing outside the Anne Frank house, and I said, this is a special, somber place. This is where Anne Frank, her family, and some friends hid from the Nazis for two years, and they couldn't speak during the day. And Anne also wrote this diary. So let's be respectful. My six-year-old raised his hand, and he goes, do they have video games here? <laughs> and I said, I'm going to need you to be quiet for the rest of your life. <laughs> Bought tickets online to the Anne Frank House. I Googled it. The Anne Frank House has a Google rating of 4.4 out of five stars. Who's giving the Anne Frank House a bad review? <laughs> it's like, yeah, wasn't that fun? It's kind of crowded and there were no video games. <laughs> Why do we feel the need to review everything? Nobody's going to Anne Frank's house looking for hot dogs. I misread it. I thought it was Anne Frank house. <laughs> I was getting ready to have me an Amsterdam dog. <laughs> oh, that was fun. You know what? I'd love to have more fun times with you. And you know how we can do that? Is if you hit subscribe or if you let me move in with you. I have constant diarrhea. Why don't you just hit subscribe?